Now, because we've had a 10 minute break, uh, the guillotine will now be 9 10. Okay? Um, so we carry on now. Uh, are there any other speakers? Right, first speaker I've got is Andrew Hodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor, Councillor Cook was the last person to speak, and he was talking about crowdfunding, which I thought was very interesting. There is a form of crowdfunding already. It's called paying your rates. It's how, how the rates are looked after and spent so people can pay for their services, but it's got to be managed properly by us, the councillors, which has proved in the past not to be done so. Also... I liked your idea about footballers. John Barnes lives a few doors down from me, so I'll knock on his door tomorrow and ask him, but I don't think we'll get the answer that you want. Anyway, Mr. Mayor, it's amazing what you can achieve from uh, what Jeff Williamson said at the first part, last, latter part of her speech, what you can achieve when parties work together. But I do find it difficult to sit and listen to some of the rhetoric from the group opposite and not to make comments. I do, do believe that as planned and suggested all political parties of this council should be working together to sort out what can only be described as the financial mess we find ourselves in now. And I feel that cooperation can be achieved with all political parties as both Councillor Tony Jones and myself have clearly shown over the past year when we made an agreement at the beginning of this term of council that we would drop the political agenda and work together with our fellow members of Regeneration to achieve the aims of the officers in new generation and from the results so far it can be seen to be working and Wirral will benefit financially with the new revenues forecast. What does not help is the constant carping and blaming such things as austerity for the final position we find ourselves in. We have to face up to the facts and also bear in mind the Ada Burns report which we all agreed to accept in its findings whether bad decisions have been made or important financial decisions have been put off over the year. Mr. Mayor, out of 333 councils, there are only 10 similar to ourselves financially. 323 have achieved financial stability. And the reason we are is because of the financial management over the past years under the Labour administration. For example, uh, points that Tom has pointed out, and I'll revisit some of those facts. The view, 300,000. Hoy Lake Golf Debacle, half a million pounds plus picture house, seven and a half million. The actual, sh just short of 13 million pounds on invoices with no order numbers, poor management practices. The local plan has not been done for years and that has been disgraceful and caused a lot of heartache for the local residents, as I'm sure Phil Simpson in the audience will agree with me. 1.3 million on temporary managers and consultants. The harebrained vanity idea of a community bank costing in the region of £5 million, which we've been unable to administer. I could go on with further examples, but I know Tom has given us quite a few, and I think you actually get the picture. This is one. So let's, the flip, the co let's flip the coin. Um, Stuart Fur, our interim section, 151 officer at the council briefing in November, actually made the report that Whittle does well in receipt of grants receiving £81 per head more than average. 
the equivalent to an additional £26 million. So while general grants, the RSG, are no longer available to the council, the council receives £246 million in specific grants. Andrew, time please. Is that it? Three minutes? Three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr Mayor, I, I rise to support the proposed budget. And given the tremendously difficult circumstances we all find ourselves in, I believe Labour's position mitigates some of the harshest cuts that at one time looked inevitable. Mr Mayor, this council has been forced to make the cuts it's proposing this year due to the fact that around £225 million has been cut from our grant from central government since 2010. So nobody here tonight is actually choosing to make council cuts. None of us will say, oh, I'm pleased to be making cuts. Not, none of us choose to make that. But when Councillor Baird says there is no need for this council to make any cuts, I say to myself, really? Is that really the case we're in? So are we just going to say no and just all go home and carry on as if nothing's changed? I don't think so because every councillor in this room tonight knows that we must declare a legal budget tonight. We all know that. We mightn't like it, but that's the situation we're in. If not, not only have we broken the law, but more importantly, the government will send commissioners up on the next train from Euston Station to take over the running of our finances. And will they care about protecting the needy, the deprived, the vulnerable, and much-loved services in the will. Of course they won't. All they're going to be concerned about is balancing the books, and they're not interested in looking after the interests of, of certain people uh, in the will. So to allow commissioners in would be a betrayal of the residents that we were all elected to represent. And if we let them in on the basis of, well, we can stand back and say, don't blame me, I didn't vote for the cuts, it's these commissioners. Again, that would be a disgraceful and dishonest cop-out of the worst kind. Now, Whittle Council has been subjected to severe and unacceptable cuts since 2010, but we keep hearing about levelling up. Levelling up. Tell that to the residents of my ward, who many of them I spoke to last week, who are telling me that they're having to make impossible decisions every day. Do they buy clothes for the children? Do they buy food for the children? Do they keep the family warm at home? Many of them have just got impossible choices and there's no answers. Now, as I said at the beginning, Mr Mayor, I support the budget and I don't rejoice in doing so because like everybody else here, I'm sure, I didn't stand to be a local councillor to make cuts. In an ideal world, we wouldn't be making any cuts. We'd be spending more money on essential and desirable services. But in an ideal world, we wouldn't have a Tory government forcing severe and unacceptable cuts upon Whittle Council, bearing in mind that we are the sixth richest country in the world. Finally, Mr Mayor, I'd like to place on record my thanks to everybody who's worked hard to get us to the position we're in tonight, where we are able to actually achieve an agreed budget. And that thanks includes councillors from all parties, and also all relevant officers of this council. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Council Birds' choice. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. Slava Ukraini. Um, I, I wasn't going to stand and talk. I genuinely wasn't. Um, people will remember that at the last council I stood here and gave my commitment, regardless of politics, to support uh, all the work that we've done in that time uh, to make Whittle sort of um, safe and uh, solvent. But um, I, I don't know. I, I must have come into a different universe because I've heard from the leader of the Labour group, the leader of the Liberal group, the leader of the Green group, the leader of the independent group and the Bird Party to tell me that everything's wonderful and everything's rosy. Well, I don't recall it being rosy, Mr Mayor. I actually realise that over the last 10 years, the real blame 
for why we are here today is because of that party across there. That leader, her predecessor, and her predecessor for that, who basically spent money that we didn't have. Now, it's quite clear that Councillor Williamson said, we won't change our plans. And that's the problem with the left. You haven't got enough money, but you keep on spending money that you haven't got. And meanwhile, you're not doing anything over the Greenbelt. You're not delivering any services for the people of Wirral. And quite frankly, I am absolutely sick and tired of listening to excuses about it being the Conservative government that isn't giving the money. It's not about that. It's about your mismanagement of this budget. And you should never be allowed to control any budget ever again. You are a disgrace. Right, before we move to Council Common, please, uh, can we refrain from just shouting and getting bad-tempered and worked up? Uh, we all respect each other, and let's hear what everyone has to say. No need for that language. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, next. what language did I use, Mr Mayor? Apologies, you've accused me of using language. What language did I well, use? Well, you were just uh, having a go at the leader of the Council. Yeah, it's called politics, Mr Mayor. Is it? Just... Yeah. Right, Councillor Gorman. Gorman, sorry. Obviously, this is not the first Budget Council I was hoping for when elected last May. It is important to remember that this budget reduction is a choice on the part of central government. The billions spent on the failed track and trace system, for example, could cover a yearly budget shortfall, like the one seen in Wirral, for hundreds of years. And it is their austerity agenda that is directly leading to the cuts we see this evening. Of course, the Council has made some poor financial decisions over the years that have exacerbated the situation, but the main culprit remains the same. Now, this is not the first time that 11 libraries in Wirral have been threatened with closure. In 2009, which is before 2010, a strategic asset review saw the same number facing the chop. This was scrapped, but it seems that 13 years later, our library service has run out of luck. While the council doesn't have much of a choice over the amount of services cut, it does have a degree of choice over where these cuts are made. The library strategy and future operating models report options recommended taking into account the start, social socio-economic contrast in the borough in deciding which libraries to keep open. This was thrown out of the window when at budget p &R it was decided to save two libraries down to the virtue of them being in the wards of councillors on that committee. One of these libraries, <laughs> one of these libraries Greasby, has the lowest need according to the council's own metrics, with low deprivation and the cost of public transport and car ownership not posing a barrier to access for nearby library locations. This is not the case near Prenton Library, where deprivation is greater and fewer transport options present a higher barrier to using other libraries. A petition in support of this library was presented at PNR, but because it was presented by the chair of a local residents association, I'm not the chair of the council committee or the leader of a party group. It was not fairly considered. Just because we are subject to the cuts from this government does not mean we also have to adopt their tendency to prioritise funding to the constituencies of senior members, as seen in the so-called levelling up agenda. Prenton is just one example I know well, but every library in Wirral has valid reasons to stay open that have not been duly considered, especially when taking into account the feasibility of asset transfer options in each location. To conclude, while the amendments go some way to ameliorate the proposals tonight, I'm not prepared to endorse this aggressively prudent draconian budget. Thank you. Councillor Comfort. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Um, it's been said before, and worthy of repetition, and I make no apologies for it. So, Mr. Mayor, over the last five years, this Labour Council, led council, has raided £49.3 million from the council's reserves to prop up the council's budget. £30 million spent in six months period without going through the purchase order process. Hoylick Golf Resort. View Cinema at £7.1 million. Community Bank at £5 million. £50 million loaned to other councils. These are but a few examples of the ten years of a Labour-led council mismanagement with no accountability. Isn't it time for change? Thank you. Council Clements. Uh, I'm advised that Councillor Comfort just made his maiden speech. Uh, I would like to congratulate him, therefore. I don't know if Councillor Gorman did. Yeah, so I would like to congratulate you two on your making your maiden speech at this very important meeting. Mr Mayor, I w I'm just written to support the proposed budget. I'm glad that the parties have been able to work together and bring it with officers to the Council. However, I am impelled to speak because as I listen to passionate speeches by the Leader of the Council and other parties, I can't agree with all their rhetoric. Mr Mayor, the Government is not telling rural people they can't have various services, but it does ask this Council to live within its means. We've seen this Council one of only a one, 11 out of 333 needing to go to Government for a bailout. And that's not anything to be proud of, Mr Mayor. Wirral does have to do better. In a reflection from the past, some years ago, we were all engaged in asset transfer of various community halls. They were passed on to community groups. Assets such as the Greensby Community Centre, Peswell Hall, Merrill Hall and others were taken on board. They're thriving. They no longer cost the council money. And in fact, they've often been substantially improved. They are well occupied. They provide a community resource. And that was a far-reaching policy which has made a real difference over the years. Mr Mayor, in the years around 2012, I certainly heard talk in scrutiny committee of doing something with, similar with leisure centres and others. It never happened. Other boroughs have taken similar steps to keep their leisure centres and libraries open to local people, often providing improved services. In the meantime, it seems that we're all labour carried on spending the family silver. It is all about choices and finding ways to work smarter. Mr Mayor, the decisions in this budget are very challenging. They're not easy, they're not taken lightly, but must happen. Removal of a structural deficit, protecting our vulnerable children and adults, keeping our parks open, coastal toilets, measures to ensure our most vulnerable can access additional money to help with rising energy costs. And thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to congratulate uh, Councillor Gorman and Camford on their maiden speeches. <laughs> yeah. uh, just pick up a few points, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we've heard the two major parties in the authority accusing each other greatly of all the mismanagements and misdoings that have gone on in the past and in the, possibly in the future as well. Uh, I've been on the council long enough to realise uh, what happens to local authorities doesn't matter what government's in power, it's the local authorities that always take the blame. The one thing that I do notice, Mr Mayor, is that the budget in front of us at the moment uh, brings closure to certain issues before consultation on these particular issues has completed its course. I find that very strange in its manner. That's one of the reasons why the Liberal Democrats have moved them the notice of motion that they have done, and that's to give the opportunity to those people in the community, whether it's golf course, library, or swimming centre, whatever, to have the true opportunity to address the problems before uh, 
the death knell takes its place. We've seen in the past the likes of uh, Ivy Cottage in Woodchurch, which was a wonderful building which was used for many, many years by different organisations, which has been left to go into rack and ruin. We try to sell it now and get a pittance for it instead of a lot of money. I find it very hard to, to, to see this. The reason we've moved the amendments that we have done is to give the communities the opportunity to make sure that they have the right amount of time to make sure that they have the opportunity to address all the problems that are faced by the council. I can go on in latitude, alarm and longitude in relation to what's happened to local authority from whatever governments have been in, in power. We've heard um, the Labour group saying we've lost over 250 million, 225 million in reductions to what we've had while we've uh, had the Conservative government in power. But at the same time, the leader of the council was the cabinet member for finance when we got into six you know, difficulties. I had the, uh, yes, the chair of uh, the children's services going on, how wonderful it was that the money's going into education. At the same time, uh, pupil pre premium uh, levels had reduced, and as she said, they've gone up at this, this particular moment, but at the same time, those people who are on low pay are having to find more money to get level. So it's actually reduced the amount of money that's going into schools. So I find it hard to take them and swallow that they're doing a, an excellent job. We've also had, sorry Mr Mayor, we've seen the light, red lights on. I'll finish there, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Osson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, can I congratulate uh, Councillors uh, Gorman and Camper for the maiden speeches. Um, so, tonight we're being asked to vote on a budget. A budget with a lack of engagement with the public, a lack of engagement with councillors, lack of engagement with charities and lack of engagement with communities. There's been a lack of bite-sized information in lay terms to the public, as Councillor Cook has alluded to. AKA, this decision is without informed community engagement. As a doctor, if I didn't take informed consent from a patient, I would be investigated and struck off by the General Medical Council. Why should Wirral Council be any different? Power has been taken away from councillors and been given to the PNR committee. And we've been told this is for a more streamlined um, service that is able to facilitate decision making. But that doesn't mean that there's less due diligence. In fact, it means there needs to be more scrutiny, more transparency. At the last PNR meeting, the decision to save these two libraries, <sighs> one in a Labour ward, one in a Conservative ward, both with PNR affiliation, it was, it was frankly embarrassing. And uh, thank you for, uh, for Councillor Gorman for, for bringing this up. And I think it makes a mockery of the whole um, situation. In my last speech, I discussed uh, institutional blindness, where people in an organisation become blind to what they uh, see. Uh, within about six months, and I find myself repeating myself again. Um, as, a, as a council, we have denied giving residents, charities and community groups enough time um, for thorough engagement. The Liberal Democrat Amendment will go some way to address this and will enable Brackenwood Golf Course and Wirral Tennis Centre in Bidston the opportunity to attempt to secure their futures. This will be the benefit for the residents of the Wirral. I hope you will support us in the Liberal Democrat Amendment tonight. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to congratulate Councillors Gorman, Camper and I believe Ottoman on the maiden speech. Is that correct? Uh, well, I don't know what I Okay, sorry. I'll congratulate you again. <laughs> Second maiden speech, yeah, thank you. Um, I'd also like to reassure, uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to reassure residents that the Labour Amendment does indeed propose to restore the Climate Emergency Fund in full, and all actions we have pledged to help combat climate change and protect biodiversity will go ahead as planned. Our environmental promises are heartfelt and sincere, and backed up with solid planning. Our plans for the local environment are also heartfelt, and I'm sure others will agree when I say that I'd like to put on record my appreciation for the work of the officers and the constituency teams 
who have worked closely with councillors of all party colours to help, to help us councillors support residents in our communities, from alleyway cleanups to in bloom competitions, and from working with police on the very worst types of antisocial behaviour to providing food parcels for vulnerable uh, families during the pandemic. They've been there in the background, helping us do our job, supporting our residents, and I want to reassure them that we are grateful and we do value them and look forward to working with them in a new and improved system that is more in keeping with the way the council is working today and going forward. We need more community engagement than ever now as we progress the exciting regeneration of Birkenhead and our other town centres. We want to ensure the teams involved understand just how valued they are by all the councillors that work with them. I therefore urge everyone to support the Labour amendment to this budget, which will see um, no compulsory redundancies. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Stuart Whittingham. Okay, thanks, Mr Mayor. And I wish to congratulate uh, Councillors Gorman and Camford on their maiden speeches. Um, okay, it's always the ordinary person in the communities that needs support the most that pays, pays the price for Tory austerity and I refuse to apologise for saving value public services and let's not forget Mr Pickles and the local Tories put out leaflets wanted, to, wanted us to use our reserves and let's also not forget that the Lib Dems have their DNA all over austerity. Much is said about the so-called structural deficit, the structural fund, funding gap more like. Levying up means nothing unless funding is provided to local governments to pay for precious Precious services such as libraries and leisure centres. I will spell out some facts for the austerity deniers on the Tory benches. Also, I'm not sure where Councillor Baird gets their figures from. The figures I'm about to quote are all about to be, all to be found in the public domain on the National Order's web, Office website. In terms of government grants in 2010-2011, we're all received £266.5 million. Pounds. In 2019-20, we only received £40 million. Pounds. Business rates, these, you can go and look them up yourself, Tom, because they're, they're all in the public domain. Business rates, in 2010-11, we received 137.8 million of our share of the National, national Non-Domestic Rate Scheme. In 2019-20, 120.2 million was raised in terms of business rates. Council tax, 154 million in 2010-11 compared to 142 million in 2019-20, and people wonder why I have to make cuts. That all leads to the spending power being reduced by 35.7% by 2019-20. Government funded spending power is down by 56.7%. Does any wonder why we have to make cuts? And I think, I think we should be commended for keeping as much as we have been able to keep going over the years in, in the face of, uh, in the face of these uh, vicious cuts. Uh, from the, the Tory government. Level up means nothing unless the government also provides sufficient funds for libraries, leisure centres, green spaces, etc, etc, etc. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Cox. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I start, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Councillor Gorman. I'm going to say thank you. They all do that again. Uh, I'd just like to say congratulations to Councillor Gorman and Councillor Camphill on their major speech, uh, maiden speech. I'd also like to um, just pay my respects to Councillor Hale, who I uh, took over from in Boy Lake and Mel's ward. Uh, it was an inspiration and an education uh, on both of my terms in the council and uh, has been extremely difficult shoes to fill. Mr Mayor, the leader of the council spoke uh, that, about Labour understanding what is fair and it seems to be some sort of mantra. But do they understand what value for money is? Do they understand the notion of waste? I question whether they do. It has taken the advent of the committee system in order to truly lay bare the financial incompetence that has been shown from successive Labour councils, Labour-led administrations over the last decade or more. Mr Mayor, for the benefit of the general public and the newer members, please allow me to highlight some of this waste. Uh, and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, repeat some of the things that other members have said, so forgive me, but it's worth reiterating. So £7 million of taxpayers' money to buy the View Cinema, a building that will be demolished. £5 million into a, a bunged into a slush fund for the Whittle Growth Company. Whatever that is for, I'm still not clear. 
£400,000 wasted on the unwanted and disastrous Labour uh, vanity project that was the Whittleview newspaper that most people have forgotten about already. Contractors being paid over £900 a day, an eye-watering amount of money to most of Whittle residents. £500,000 payoff, and this one's particularly poignant to myself because it's in my ward. £500,000 payoff to Nicholas Joint Venture Group to get us out of a contract for the load Hoylake Golf Resort, which many people here campaigned against, including myself. Hundreds of thousands of pounds on a communications department, losing money to fraudsters. The list goes on and on, but I only get three minutes, Mr. Mayor. This is all money that should be spent on frontline services. But my personal favourite is paying out £30 million per annum without a valid purchase order. This is very, very basic stuff. This is stuff that the Labour administration should have been all over, all over these years. How can they possibly have guaranteed value for money without a valid audit trail on spending? You just can't. Mr Mayor, the Cyprian Governance Review also found holes in the decision making at Whittle Council. They found that long term financial decisions have been avoided. And with the optimistic budgets that I have seen over the 10 years I've been involved, this isn't hard to see. Now, with regard to this year's budget, I will agree with the Leader that it must have been extremely difficult and one of the hardest to arrive at. But all parties have had input, and I put a lot of that down to the fact that we are working more collaboratively now. But there has clearly been robust debate behind the scenes, and this is a budget that can move us towards a sustainable footing once and for all, despite the previous waste. So I'll be voting for this this evening, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Brain. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My congratulations too to your councillors Camper and uh, Gordon on their maiden speeches. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Anderson said earlier that the budget isn't perfect, and he, he's quite right. And that is exactly why the Liberal Democrats have moved uh, amendments to the budget tonight. Councillor Cox uh, was giving praise to the, the new committee system, but one of my concerns is that the new committee system is, is being bypassed. We were told by SIPFA when we got the report that members need to take more responsibility for managing the budget process at the outset. This includes setting clear savings and engaging at an early stage with budget decisions. Well, members of our committees have not been able to take part in these uh, budget decisions. Uh, when agendas have come to committees, it hasn't included uh, items. Um, for example, um, We've got this report about the Bidston World Tennis Centre and the proposal that we're going to close it uh, in April um, and then we're going to spend the year uh, taking three of the tennis courts out, uh, putting in a soft play and uh, gym facilities. Um, it means we will no longer have any, any indoor tennis facilities on Wirral. It is the only one. There are plenty of gym facilities. We're told that this is going to save money, but as we all know, the World Tennis Centre is located in the most uh, deprived ward in the borough. And we're expecting people in that community to uh, generate income which is going to surpass the money generated from tennis at present. Now, I'm just not convinced that these figures stack up. And I think it's very disappointing that this report <coughs> has not come to the tourism Tourism and Leisure uh, Committee for us to analyse this. Um, we, we also think about the, the Brackenwood Golf Course. We're told that's going to close on April the 1st. Um, but it's then going to be open for consultation for people to come in from the outside and look at, to take it over by the end of September. Well, over the, the summer, the, uh, the course is going to become unplayable. It is just a, a, a nonsense of a policy. There is a, an outfitter already that wants to take it over, it's ready to go, and this council has just been far too slow dragging its feet. We, we, we need to, to, to pass it over and keep it going as a viable golf course that people can use uh, in the future. So we do need to be consulted, we do need to be involved, and we need to think about decisions that are going to really make um, uh, an impact uh, for the future provision. And, and not make uh, decisions that are uh, uh, um, putting out consultations after decisions have been made. It's putting the cards completely before the horse, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations to uh, Ivan, Camfer, and uh, Harry Gorman. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think as much to celebrate in the budget that was put forward at PR uh, in terms of what we've uh, retrieved from a very dire situation public toilets, resident car parking, which would have seen £60 per vehicle, Mr. Mayor, for those in some of the hardest pressed areas of our town, Prenton and Woodchurch included. Um, the asset transfer budget, which gives lifelines and, and hopefully uh, allows more to go on. Antisocial behaviour team, school crossing patrols. Um, uh, we're, we're seen to be criticising that two libraries have been saved at PNR. Uh, shouldn't we be celebrating that two libraries have been saved at PNR? I didn't hear the Lib Dems put anything forward at PNR, and I didn't. Well, they basically the Greens just simply voted against the, the, the budget proposal. So if that's responsible, you know, policy making, then. They, they have to answer that for, for themselves. But this council has had all sorts of makeups, and it's always easy to say Labour-led council we've had. Uh, I mean, the, the late great uh, John Hale, who, who, whose funeral I, I was proud to attend, even he, when he was leader of the council, had to put the rates up 20%. Remember? We all remember that. So we've had ups and downs. We've had different administrations. I remember last time the Conservatives were in control. They uh, reduced council tax by 4% left the income and labour administration with a budget overspend of £17 million. Pound. And in the first two months of that administration, made 900 people redundant, only to have to rehire them because a lot of them were in the library service. So this is what can go on. Nowhere in the report that you've read are, any, are we being accused, this council, of maladministration. And that's always the smokescreen. It's like, oh, we've wasted money, we've done something wrong, we've done something dodgy. No, we've not followed all the, all the guidelines. Mr Pickles told us to use reserves, as Councillor Whittingham says. We've done that. We've tried speculative investment schemes. Some have worked and some haven't. We've done all the things that governments have tried to make us do. No, Mr Mayor, the one major contrib contributory factor to the budget crisis is the policy adopted by the Tory and Lib Dem coalition when they embark on austerity. And it's like some sort of drug, like your heroin. You are addicted on austerity, and you are addicted on attacking public services. You are addicted on privatising the National Health Service. You are addicted on attacking local government because there's a smokescreen or there's a human shield, such as, such as councillors that can take the flag. Listen, there's no way anyone, any of the other parties in this room can change the way local government is treated. It is only the Labour Party that has a realistic chance of ousting the Tories at the next election. So turn your fire on the Tories, back the Labour Party to replace this current government with a party that believes in local government and will finance it correctly, Mr Mayor. Councillor Mountley. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, how do you follow that? He's very good at it, isn't he, Councillor Bad? He's very good at the rhetoric. Very few facts, but lots of rhetoric. Mr. Mayor, I, I will be voting with my group uh, on the budget proposal this evening. Uh, not because I like everything in it. In fact, there are savings in it that I wish we didn't have to make. And I know colleagues feel the same about other savings that we're going to have to make. But we do have a corporate responsibility to bring this council to a point of having a balanced budget, and I will therefore be supporting the budget proposal supported by my group. Moving forward from this disappointing evening, it's vital that the public do understand clearly how we got to where we are, because they can also then make informed choices going forwards, as we have tried to make informed choices to set this budget. The Labour group who have been in control of this council for 10 years have constantly told us tonight that this is down to austerity and a lack of central government funding. I'm sorry, that is just not true. Not true. This is down to poor decision making by the Labour Authority in the Wirral over the last 10 years. I'll have to check the figures on, the, on when we finish. Councillor Whittingham said that in 2010, the budget for this council was £240 million. I think, I'll have to check, I can tell you in 2019 
it was £288 million, Councillor Whittingham. A serious increase. Over the last three years, the base budget for this council has gone from 288 to 304 to 329 million pounds. That's the funding that this government put in. I'll repeat again. Our section 151 officer, the person responsible for making the budget balance, he said, Wirral does well in receipt of grants receiving £81 per head more than the average, equivalent to an additional £26 million. Now, they're the facts. You can listen to the rhetoric previously, or you can listen to the facts. Mr Mayor, let's be clear. There are 333 councils in England. Only 10 have received exceptional financial support. That's 3% have received exceptional financial support. That puts Wirral Council in the bottom 3%. I don't want to be in the bottom 3%. Yeah. I want to be in the top 3%. Yeah. And while we've been under a Labour-led administration, this is where we've ended up. They're the facts. You might not like them, but they're the facts. It both disappoints me and it disturbs me that we find where we are now. But they are the facts. Mr Mayor, thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr Mayor. Um, I would also like to congratulate Councillors Gorman and Camper on their making speeches. For anyone in this borough to believe that cuts, yes cuts not savings, that are being proposed and debated here tonight, put before us for any other reason than the reduction in government funding this council has seen over the last 10 years, then perhaps they've not been living here on the Wirral. In those last 10 years, as noted by my fellow councillor, councillor Brian Kenny, residents of Wirral have seen a direct cut in government funding. There's no levelling up here. And I ask those sat opposite, including Councillor Burgess Joyce, if they have stood up to their government on behalf of the residents that they are elected to represent. Of course they haven't. They, as a whole, don't represent the majority of residents in our borough. Residents who are having to make desperate decisions. Families who have to make the painful dilemma to eat or heat. This is not a choice, but a very real dilemma. The Minister for Leveling Up, Michael Gove, said levelling up would shift money and power into the hands of local people. Why then, last week, did I give out 150 food parcels to families struggling to put food on the table during half term, with many more registered for the next school break? This is a sorry state of affairs, and I am ashamed of our government. I am ashamed of a government that made the choice that most ordinary working people don't matter. This is not a position any of us here want to be in, but as a direct result of government cuts, it's where we find ourselves. And sadly, it's not a choice that I want to make, but I will